Pacific is on uh, Natalie's slander and her sister's knowledge of this. The biggest issue with the protection order from Natalie is that there was no timeline, no time frame on it whatsoever. People who read that just assumed that it was all a bunch of recent shit. It wasn't. The stuff that was put down on that protection order was mostly lies. Because Natalie didn't work there. They tried to play off like me staying behind where Alicia worked was stalking. Alicia knows that it was Alicia's idea for me to do that. You don't get to ask somebody to do something and then call them a stalker for doing what it is that you asked them to do. That's fucked. Now these guys want to pretend like I stalked them to Virginia. If I stalked them, then why did we plan it? If I stalked them, why were they inviting me to places? If I stalked them, why was Natalie texting me so many times that she just wanted to talk to me? Just me and her, one on one. That's all on that fucking flip phone, dumbass. But you guys and them fucking uh, Sean Schwartz hater groups masquerading as Natalie Bollinger groups, you don't get to see that because the people who are going out of their way to slander my name, they're going and picking and choosing the parts that they want to try to twist it out to make me look evil. Do you think uh, Rochelle, Shelley Campbell showed the truth in court? Fuck no, she didn't. If she had, her ass would be in jail. How about Danica Garner? Did she show any of the part where I was trying to help find Natalie? Did these people show any of the parts where I was trying to get them somewhere safe? Did they put in there the shit about Kara Johnson, Miles, and her bullshit? No, they didn't. You know what the difference in that was? Whether or not Shannon Alvarado, the fucking cunt-ass bitch rag, came forward and filled out a report. Kara Johnson Miles and that fucking evil wench that used to be Natalie's stepmother would have never gotten away with the shit that they had gotten away with if Shannon had made a fucking statement. Shannon knew what this woman was doing, and she never made a police report. She never even fucking tried. Zero fucking effort. I can't. I'm out of state. Well, she made a fucking report from Texas, you fucking moron. And I told you that probably 400 fucking times while I was at your house, Shannon. Now, the part about me creeping around Natalie's house. I was going between Ken and Leah's house to Miss Peach's house by the shortest route possible. That's not the same as going to her house and sitting outside and waiting for her to come out. It's not. See, that's the thing. You try to say that I'm a stalker because I did what you asked. You didn't bother to write down that that's what you asked. I should have been allowed some fucking help. I had been begging for help for a whole year before Natalie died. I'd beg Derek Parrish for help. I'd beg Aunt B for help. I'd begged all these people for help who couldn't take the time to listen. They were too busy with pretty memes and talking about poop. Or with Derek in his particular case, I made a hammer for Joanna. Because she couldn't make the time in six fucking weeks to talk to me. It was all in texting. And I begged her, please stop texting me and fighting time to call and listen. But she wouldn't do that because the last time we had a conversation, she kept talking over me. I begged her, please stop with the pretty words. Just listen to me. Stop with the bird in one hand and shit in the other. Fucking listen to what's going on, Jojo. I mean, literally 30 minutes of that. 30 minutes of that. Well, I'm stressed the fuck out. I was up at uh, Jamie Curtis's house in Rapid City, South Dakota. 
when I made that conversation and that call to JoJo. And that's when she promised that she would try to help. That's when she told me that she would try to have coffee with me. But it's all in texting. I'm like, JoJo, no, stop. All right, I can't type it all. I can't fucking type it all. Stop making me type. Fucking call me. If you can spend 45 goddamn minutes fucking texting, you can take five minutes to hear it out of my voice. I'm so fucking overwhelmed. Meanwhile, Joanna can still come forward. She can still make a difference, but she's not going to make any effort. I made her that hammer so that I had an excuse to go over there and talk to them in person. But within an hour of being there, JoJo and Derek got into an argument. Derek was pissed off and looking for somebody to fight with. He didn't want to fight with her, so he picked it with me. And Joanna Taylor asked him to stop. And Janine Barrett, his own mother, asked him to stop. It went on for two fucking days. And resulted in me getting assaulted by Derek. He should have let it go. You guys tell me I need to let it go. No, Derek needed to let it go. I was fucking frustrated. I was there to talk to JoJo. And I can't talk to JoJo because Derek's busy being pissed off because I had two words that didn't connect perfectly two fucking days prior. And I'm trying to explain to him, hey, my words didn't come together right, so stop being a dick and let me fucking explain what I meant. That's the problem with overwhelming me and then fucking trying to talk to me. You've already fucking overwhelmed me. I need to calm the fuck down. And you obviously need to calm the fuck down, too. After two days of that, I was like, Derek, this is fucking bullshit. At that point, he was just fucking being angry to put on a show for Joanna and fucking his mom. I'm like, dude, see, that's why it needs to be one-on-one. -on -one, because if not, then it's a show. It's about who's right. And you want to be right more than the other guy. Whereas two people having a one-on-one -on -one conversation can be fucking reasonable. Anytime somebody goes in to talk to the cops, they should have an advocate with them. Especially if they're disabled. As far as the lies that Natalie told, Alicia knows their lies and she could come forward. Instead, her friends and family went at me and fucking harassed me and threatened my life repeatedly because she wouldn't come forward. These people did these things because Alicia wouldn't tell the fucking truth. All of it. All of it. All of the things that happened to me since I left Virginia would not have happened if she would have fucking told the goddamn truth. And then people are thinking that I've been sitting outside of her work in Colorado for a whole fucking year because of the way that she wrote that fucking shit on the protection order. Are you fucking kidding me? I didn't even know she was in the fucking state of Colorado! Fuck you, Alicia Bollinger! You tell the truth, you fucking cunt!